contact bearing dead ahead. Fourth weekend in a row here on Barakai. And as you can see, things are a little different. It's rough. There's like a storm brewing somewhere. And usually the water here is like crystal clear aquamarine glass. And it still makes for great swimming. Still a great destination, even when the sun isn't blazing in the sky. But rather than show you more of me just strolling up and down the beach, let's take a look at the mainland, right? Ackland. What's it like to live in the province over there? And maybe just a bit of Brock Eye, because I got a bit of a, a guided tour the other night, and uh, I was getting shown around and actually got shown a new bar here in Station 3, and it's pretty kick-ass. Welcome to Kaliba. This is the BGC of Ackland. It's not like there's a lot of anything going on here. I mean, this place pretty much shuts down by about 8 o'clock at night. There's a couple little restaurant bars that are open till 9 or 10. I've yet to see one open till midnight, at least during the week. But then again, I don't go out during the week, so that's going to be a tough order to fill. All right, Kalibo. I'm not a morning person, yet I am up early in the morning because I found a new gym. I mean, I was getting up early before to go to the gym, but it was kind of far away and I had to drive. And driving here and parking is kind of a pain in the ass. So I'm like, you know what? Just get up a little earlier, walk to the other gym, get warmed up by the time you get there, walk back, a little more exercise for you because I'm not getting enough walking in as it is. As you see, I walk everywhere all the time, but here, unless I'm at the gym or swimming, I'm literally sitting on my ass working or laying down. So, uh, adding walks in. Within a week or two, my schedule is going to change. I'm going to have a lot more time during the day. Thinking about adding boxing back in. Why? Because I can. Because when something works, you double down. Um, because there's really not much else to do here. Because part of the reason why I wanted this separation, this isolation, this solitude was so I did not have distractions to kept me uh, uh, distracted from hitting my goals, which at this point were just sort of fitness and diet based. So, Kalibo, everybody. Got the whole gym to myself, baby. New gym. They say, be stronger than your excuse. And I thought to myself, what's my excuse this morning besides I don't want to get up at 6.30 in the morning. My excuse was, I don't want to walk 20 minutes in the hot Philippine sun to get to the gym. And I don't want to work out at a gym where the equipment is like 50 years old and there's no AC and the music sucks. But, I was happy to do it and walk 20 minutes back home because it's an opportunity, an opportunity to better myself, an opportunity to reach my goals. And I've been crying like a bitch for a year about how I can't go to the gym in my condo because of lockdown. And now I can go to the gym every day, twice a day. I don't even have to walk. I can take a tricycle for 20 pesos. So life is good when you can stay on track. I'm trying to stay on track, I'm trying hard. Remember, discipline trumps motivation. I made it back to the second gym I've discovered here in Ackland. And uh, let me tell you, this is the hottest, sweatiest gym I've ever been in in my life. And it's one of those old school, if you don't watch it, gonna smash your thumb kind of gyms, you know what I mean? And there's something I like about that. Like you gotta earn your cred in a gym like this. That's the old school, baby. Weight stack. It's like a Frankenstein's operating table. 
I know it's on a main road, but that's a cool space. Think about what you could do with that space. I am pretty sore from the gym. It hurts to move, but what I've realized is it hurts worse to pinch an inch. So, uh, cardio time. I finally got invited to a wedding at the facility where I swim. And there's a cow here. Yeah, I'm really not too pleased about this whole arrangement. I mean, that's stuff, but whatever. Uh, Dry weddings. Tell me, don't play that. I'm the only drunk dude here. Somehow, that signifies abundance. Talk about pumping iron. Yikes. I have my days free again now that I've shifted back to mid-shift. And days that I'm not double workout, in other words, I don't go to the gym in the morning, I don't swim in the afternoon. If the pool's not available, I walk. And I'll spend like an hour or two walking around, usually looking for bargains, but just trying to get to know the lay of the land. I'm not big on cooking with aluminum. Though. Some of the prices on these massive woks and these incredibly huge cooking pots are so cheap. You could literally start a restaurant business here for like 300 bucks. Hey, how you doing, man? Boy, those avocados look good. Eating a couple of those a day on keto is primarily how I get my fats. You don't know the meaning of sweat box until you've worked out in an unair conditioned Philippines gym mid morning in the summertime. I've been in saunas where I've sweated less. Lots of apps, lots of websites, lots of paperwork, lots of craziness, lots of testing, lots of insurance in order to get in and out of the Philippines to Thailand, back to Thailand, back to Manila. You know, well, I should do a full video on everything that's really required for that. And the crazy thing is, is, you know, when you come back to the Philippines, you have to put your phone number in on their one health pass.ph app thing that doesn't even work. And then they go and they sell your phone number to some marketing list. Like the day after I, I filled that thing out, I'm getting texts like, you can work from home. You can make a thousand pesos a day. It's like, guys, really? It's bad enough. You waste my time filling out some health pass app that doesn't even work when you scan the qr code and now you gotta like sell my phone number to a marketing agency on top of it let me just let me just say that that it, that's just pathetic guys you, you can do better that's high tide here you can see how close it comes to the shops this time of day Late afternoon, it'll be like 20 meters out. Well, that was a long swim down the beach in pretty rough and choppy waters. And I have to tell you, it was amazing just being able to blast music and feel the, the ocean or the sea tossing me while I was like paddling and kicking forward with my eyes closed. It was like being lost in a virtual reality world. It was really incredible. Another absolutely cheap AF room here in Baraka. Uh Once you sign up to Agoda and start booking a couple of things, they send you discount codes and stuff. Um, I was able to get this place for under a thousand pesos a night, which is pretty fantastic. I mean, that's like $17 a night. My chill beach spot. I love how there's sand. A little bit rainy, but still beats sitting at home. Getting caught in the rain on the way back today. But 
no big deal. Through the uh, Freedom and Fun with JLB and Friends uh, YouTube channel, a guy I've known for a couple of years, he has a pretty cool YouTube vlogger community here in the Philippines, and one of his peeps is Cherry, and Cherry lives here in Boracay, and if you guys want the latest updates on what's going on in Boracay, you gotta check out her channel. What's the name of the channel? The Wonder Cherry in Boracay. Just check it, guys. All right, I'll put up a link or something. Check out station three tonight. So far, it's pretty quiet, but it's early. Well, this place looks really chill. The Villa Camille. It's quiet. Station three. Very nice. Well, hello there. Como esta? Salama. Happy hour, baby. Hello. How are you? See, that's my kind of bar. It's open. It's got like a natural wood feel. Bamboo, it's right on the beach. A couple of single babes at the bar. That's not bad. Yeah, tonight Station 3 has got a chill vibe. I like it. There's supposedly a new bar down here. And my new JLB contact, Chari, who has a YouTube channel, I'll put a link up or something, is showing me to a new bar. As I said, I always come to Barakai and like surf and sand and sea and sun all day long. And by the time night rolls around, I'm so beat, I, I, I just pass out. Tonight, it's bar hopping night. God, I can't believe how quiet it is down here in some of these places. Ooh, a coffee bar. It's awesome. Look at that. Totally chill. Definitely looks new. Station Y, huh? Ooh, Club Climax. Yeah. Let's get ready to erupt. It actually looks like a club. Uh -huh. Hi, Club Climax. It's Station 3 here in Barakai. I think it is the new bomb spot. Unfortunately, I showed up just a little too early for it to be very bomb. But I was talking to the guy that uh, facilitates the place, and he's telling me, um, they're open to four in the morning and the place gets bumping late. So if I can manage a late night, I think this is the place to be later. Another fun night at the Coco Bar. And not only fun, but great experience. And let me tell you why. It's so, so rare in the Philippines that they make amends for anything. You know, if you wait an hour and a half for your food, they're like, oh, sorry, sir. But here at the go-go bar tonight, I ordered some food and the guy knew I've been waiting for like 40 minutes for it. And he comes over and he pours four shots out on the table. And he's like, complimentary. I can count on the fingers of one hand how many times I've been comped anything in the Philippines. Tonight, these guys comped me. So they got a great tip, and the calamari was kick-ass. I'm always in search of calamari. You know, if you're traveling and you want to know where to find a good calamari, subscribe to the old channel. And again, for some reason, this place is just the most bumping spot on the beach. Now that it's almost midnight, I'm wondering 
is that spot down in station three. Climax is starting to pump a little bit more. Just walking back to my spot down in station three this week because I was the cheapest, cheap ass joint I could find. And uh, lots of inviting smiles on the way, if you know what I mean. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe.